Lost in the Snow, written by Christopher Audrey. Thomas's driver and fireman watched the sky anxiously. Heavy clouds loomed and lowered, and it became dust in the middle of the day. We're in for it, said the driver. We'll be needing a snowplow before long. Thomas was cross. He didn't like the snowplow. It was heavy and cumbersome. But he remembered that Terence had to come and pull him out of the snowdrift when he'd been silly without it before. I shall just have to put up with it, I suppose, he said to himself. His driver was right. Before long, it was snowing, and by next morning, the countryside was thickly covered. Thomas could not go as fast as usual, and his fireman wanted to top him his water tanks at the junction. But they found that the water collar was out of order. Never mind, Thomas, he said. We can last until the station by the airfield. We'll get some water there. Among the passengers who got into Annie at the junction was a lady carrying a large basket. Inside the basket was something which moved about and now and then mewled faintly. I'm taking my cat to my daughter's, explained the woman. She's going to look after him for me when I go away at Christmas. Once the train was safely on the move, the lady opened the basket and everyone made a great fuss of the cat as he sat on the owner's lap. Thomas stopped at the station by the airfield and several passengers got out. A door slammed. The cat was startled. With a swift look round, he jumped off the lady's lap through the open window and disappeared into the snow outside. Oh no! wailed the woman and getting out of Annie herself ran to find the guard. Not to worry, he said encouragingly. Thomas needs water, so we shall have to spend a few minutes here in any case. You'll have time to look for your cat. He can't have gone far in this snow. Some of the other passengers got out to help with the search. Thomas's driver and fireman got out too, but they didn't help. They had troubles of their own. The water column here is frozen too, like the one at the junction. And by now, the water level in Thomas's tanks were getting dangerously low. Where's your shovel? The driver asked the fireman. We'll have to fill the tank with snow. Thomas shivered and said nothing. He knew that the alternative was even worse. The fireman clambered onto the top of Thomas's cab and the driver passed a shovel up to him. Then he took his place at the ground and began throwing shovelfuls of snow up, aiming to land them on the tank beside the fireman. Not all the snow reached the target and each time some hit his boiler. Thomas shuddered. Sorry Thomas, said his driver cheerfully. Some children go snowboarding for fun, you know. <laughs> muttered Thomas to himself. Not my idea of fun. Meanwhile, down on the ground, the searches for the cat were growing desperate. They seemed to have looked everywhere, but the animal couldn't be found. He was not on the station, in the train, under the train, or anywhere near it. They even looked in Thomas's cab, but he wasn't there either. Just then, there was a shout from outside. Nearly full, called the fireman. The driver mopped his brow. Thank goodness for that, he remarked. This is warm work. He slid the shovel once more under a heap of snow and lifted. The snow from on the shovel moved. 
the driver almost dropped it in surprise. Then a heap of snow mewled. Well, I'm blessed, exclaimed the driver. What a good job we didn't put that into Thomas's tank. They went to find the station master, who gave them an old towel. Then, when the cat was was finally dried, a porter gave her some warmed milk, and the cat's owner thankfully put her animal back in his basket. Later, in the shed, Thomas told Percy and Toby about the adventure. I'm glad the lady got her cat back, he said. Now she can go away and have a happy Christmas after all. But I'll tell you something, he added. Take my advice and never go snowballing. It's no fun at all. I've tried that, so I know.